In this episode, we are presenting an organization that changes people's lives in Blackpool and is likely to have saved some of them. Nothing less. It is called Empowerment, a name which in itself conveys a whole mission statement. It is located in Bispham, on the North Shore. Since changing one's life is a journey, metaphorically let us drive you there. This will take us 8 minutes or so from the tower, time to have a chat on the way. In what follows, we bring in the context in England and more specifically in Blackpool, highlight what they are trying to achieve, introduce some of its users and members, explain why the first becoming the second makes so much sense and is even hoped and expected, and briefly narrate their journey. We rely on a couple of facts and figures, and provide the insights of a university researcher on the issue. Finally we expand the subject by introducing some of the pillars of a widely used approach to mental health support and counselling, which is likely to have contributed to those achievements. But first, let's set the context. Behind its glittery seafront, providing entertainment and joy to visitors, there is a less glamorous reality. Blackpool has the highest rate of the so-called deaths of despair in England. That is deaths linked to alcohol, drug abuse, and suicide. This is exactly where empowerment steps in. Paul, a local resident, is battling alcohol addiction. He's about to start a detox course and potentially six months of rehab. With the support of his worker Dave and the charity Empowerment, Paul is determined to overcome his addiction. He's motivated by the desire to change his life, stop his daily drinking, and not let himself or others down. The journey will be tough, but Paul is ready to seize this opportunity for a better life. Stephen, a senior member of the empowerment team in Blackpool, shares his journey from drug addiction to recovery. Raised in a council estate, he fell into a cycle of drug use, crime, and prison. After 20 years, a talk with a former addict sparked hope in Stephen. He realized recovery was possible and was inspired to change his life. He became aware that the key to recovery was to make new decisions in his life, regarding people, places, and things. Now clean for over seven years, Stephen's life is transformed. He has a job he loves, a partner, a child, and a home. Kate, a woman in her 30s, struggled with addiction and homelessness. Despite dropping out of rehab and facing pregnancy, her empowerment support worker never gave up on her. Now clean for over 100 days, Kate credits her recovery to the support she received. Both Kate and Paul are on the path to recovery thanks to empowerment. The empowerment charity in Blackpool, comprising 25 members, works alongside social workers, the town council, and the local NHS to provide housing, healthcare, and support for the homeless. All with lived experience, they help others navigate the chaotic and dangerous lives they once went through themselves. They distribute anti-overdose treatment, and build trusting relationships with those in chaos. Between 2019 and 2021, about 46,200 people died of deaths of despair across England. The rate in Blackpool is 83.8 per 100,000 people, significantly higher than the London borough of Barnet's lowest UK rate of 14.5. Yes, that's nearly six times higher. 
A study led by the University of Manchester and other institutions mapped deaths of despair across England. Risk factors include being from the North, white, male, working class, in a manual job, and having a lower education level. These factors, combined, exacerbate inequalities. Blackpool, a northern town, accumulates several of them. Despite the UK's wealth, resources are unevenly distributed, which prompts the author of the study, Christine Camacho, to say, the UK is a wealthy country, but it's also quite an unfair one. And deaths of despair are one avoidable consequence. The Department of Health and Social Care says it is committed to reducing health disparities by 2030, increasing mental health spending, and implementing a 10-year plan to address drug and alcohol-related harms. Empowerment gives us yet another example of how empathy, unconditional positive regard, non-judgmental active listening, heal altogether trauma and promote change in individuals. Empathy means, being able to put oneself into somebody's shoes, making them feel understood. Thanks to Empowerment's policy of recruiting their former users as members once they managed their transformation, members are well placed to understand the users indeed. Since they were on a similar path, had similarly experienced despair, drugs, and alcohol, before getting a similar helping hand from a member, a future peer. We were not able to meet Empowerment's team at this stage, although we may in the future, but it looks very much like the case workers were trained to the principles of American psychologist of the 1950s, Carl Rogers. If you know more, please leave a comment. His approach is nowadays quite universally used by charities like the Samaritans and also counselors and psychotherapists of most modalities in the UK, as a substrate of their respective speciality because it puts the patient in the driver's seat of their own recovery, and it empowers them. Does the word empowers ring a bell? Carl Rogers explained his principles as early as 1942 in his book Counseling and Psychotherapy, and we are quite sure empowerment are making good use of it, for the great benefit of their users. We hope to be able to validate our assumption with them at some point. Also we mentioned the notion of trauma. These tend to be passed from generation to generation. Nobody falls into addiction randomly. These are often fueled by low self-esteem, possibly stemming from a deficit of interest from their own parents, potentially too occupied themselves by their own addiction, trying to alleviate their own low self-esteem and a trauma from a previous generation. And so on. Breaking the cycle is not easy, but it is possible with the right support. We provided the example earlier of Steve that had the courage to redecide his life after many years and errands, with the support of empowerment. This example is fundamental, because there is a link between untreated mental health and crime. So the work that empowerment is doing is beneficial, not only for the individuals, but for Blackpool's community as a whole. As you can see, we have now reached the empowerment building, which was the goal of our journey, which itself was an opportunity to discuss various related topics. As a bonus we now have the pleasure to review the various inspirational statement labels positioned in front of each parking space. We hope you enjoyed this episode. We are now opening the debate, are you a member or user of empowerment? Please share by leaving a comment. Also we don't hold the truth. If we made a wrong assumption, please let us know. Finally, if you liked this episode, don't miss out. Please feel free to subscribe and ring the bell, 
to be notified of our future similar content. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you soon.